WWE is running off with pandemic relief funds? Say it ain't so. We'll get all into why it might not be as bad as it sounds. Plus, Wrestle Dream was this weekend, and Brian Danielson's career came to a controversial end. We'll get all into our thoughts on that on today's episode of Wrestling with Ya Boy. Now, y'all know me, still same OG, it's your boy Quan. And if you don't say the Don, you ain't saying it right. Yeah, you did. And of course, I got my man with me, my BFF, the coolest man in the world with the jacket on. I almost knocked the microphone, on, yeah, microphone <laughs> down. Knock my microphone down. It's cold Coolie, out here. Coolie. <laughs> the coolest, the cooler -ist. What's going on, the man? The cooler -ist. We making that a word. I know it's not in the dictionary. But we gonna add it. We gonna write it down and put a definition under it. You know what that Same definition thing. gonna be? <laughs> that definition is gonna be Jay Cool it, cool it, cool it, cool it. <laughs> the cooler is. What's going on, brother? I be I hey WWE running off with them funds. This is what's going on. Yikes. Oh, Risk Carlton. Ran Terrible up, optics. Up twice. <laughs> the optics are bad. The optics are actually really bad. But before we get into that, Cooley, I gotta ask you, man, have you watched the penguin yet? I have not. Oh, I God. blame. What do you do? listen, what do you do man? I'm supposed what, to watch it. <laughs> what do you do? You just you sleep? Uh, you know, I catch up on Z. Sometimes I, you know, get some game in. Um, so you know, you practice playing, some you video game stuff instead film. of watching. Instead of watching the bro, episode four. I know E saw it. I know E Almighty saw it. Man, this show yeah, is it's, it's must watch for me at this point. I'm yeah. Sunday night with it. Yeah, we 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 are in there. This last episode focused on Sophia, and we got her backstory. Oh, my God. So I'm in the process of watching too much things at once, and I hate when I'm in that type of process. So I'm trying to let that breathe because I'm watching the Dodgers. I'm watching the WNBA Finals. I'm watching AEW Wrestle Dream. It's just a lot <laughs> going on. So I'm just trying to let it breathe, bro. But I'm happy I haven't seen no spoilers. So right. obviously – I would cool. try not to, but man, once we get to like episode seven or eight and you ain't seen it yet, I'm gonna have to go ahead and just, you know. That's wild. <laughs> Put them fillers out there. That's wild. <laughs> and I That's did watch enough. Wrestle Dream, man. Yo, we gotta shorten these shows. I'm so I know five matches is a, a little too short for WWE, but we don't need no goddamn eleven matches for a wrestling show. That's that's too long. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm like, damn, still going. <laughs> still going. Cooley, I woke up this morning. I was on um, X app and I saw our boy AJ Francis battling the saga. He battled like yes, yes, what? you heard that right. AJ Francis, TNA wrestler, AJ Francis, member of First Class, AJ Francis battled the saga, and it looked like he was barring. It looked like he might have won. I don't know. Hey man, AJ just living life, man. <laughs> Can we show some <laughs> love to AJ? It. I say it. Hey, we got to show love to AJ. He's doing his thing. Everybody tried to laugh when he went over the top rope and didn't quite make it over. They start calling him Flop Dollar. Man, he's killing it right now. Yeah, he's doing his thing, man. Shout out to AJ. The, the only wrestler to ever rap battle, like in a, in a battle rap league, and really hold his own against a guy whose pen is nice. Hey, you Shout out to AJ link. Francis, man. I got yeah, you. Send me I got link, you. Man. So I haven't watched the whole thing yet. I've only seen highlights, but he had a Booker T, I'm coming for you line. It was it was dope. It was Ooh, dope. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fire. It was super dope. Anyway, you ready to get into these graps? Let's get it. <sighs> <laughs> Stop doing that, bro. <laughs> Every time you do it, I laugh because it just looks so damn silly, man. For the people who are listening to the audio and they can't see what Cooley is doing. He's doing the no mercy grapple. Like when you hit the, was it the A button? He was just holding it. And, you know, the, the uh, movement. Cooley does it every time I say, let's get into grapple. Yeah, I think it was the A button. It was the A. Yeah, we have to figure out a shirt for that. That's for funny. Real. Get There's these grabs. <laughs> Talk grabs every day. Talk grabs every day. So, Cooley, WWE is set to host the first two night SummerSlam at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. WWE received more than 7100000 from the government, making it the highest amount they've ever received from a government entity to host a show. However, there is one slight problem. That money is coming from pandemic release funds New Jersey received back in 2021. Yikes. Instead of reallocating that money to inner city schools or I don't know, 
fixing highways, combating homelessness. I don't know. They're instead giving that money to WWE to host a wrestling show. The optics are kind of nuts. I'm not going to lie. I mean, it sounds bad. All, it, it sounds bad. It, it sounds, sounds bad. It sounds terrible until you actually read into the articles. So right. let's not let's not forget that these headlines are very sens- sensationalized. That's true. So at the end of the day, these th- this is a reinvestment into the economy to boost yeah. all these businesses in the yeah. city of New Jersey. At the end of the day, it just sounds bad because you're saying COVID <laughs> and the funds, the pandemic funds. Pandemic was four years ago, and you've just been sitting on $7 million. What are we doing? But at the end of the day, budget allocation. Yeah. Budget so, allocation. I will say WWE itself is facing unfair criticism in this whole thing because it's not like WWE ran up on New Jersey and threatened to blow them up like Chief Keith and demanded the pandemic money. Like, you know, they just they showed up, and New Jersey had money for them. It just happened to be the pandemic money. So if you're going to get mad at anybody – be mad at New Jersey, first of all. WWE is kind of clean in this. But people got to understand these WWE shows are like All-Star Weekend at this point. They're like the Super Bowl at this point. They bring in a lot of tourists. That's flights. That's hotels. That's transportation. That's food. That's shopping. If you want a healthy economy, you call WWE at this point. And New Jersey did it. This this weekend, this two-night SummerSlam weekend, is is projected to do over $80 million in like money, like in tourist money. That's going to boost the economy. So you can't really get mad at that. That's what, the, that's what this money was for in the first place. Do you know how much, those, how much money those street vendors are going to make? Because, cool, we were, we were at WrestleMania Oof. when it was out here in Los Angeles, bro. Them little abuelitas out there selling them hot dogs. They was making off with that bread. They was making 20 glizzy like every five minutes. I'm like, oh, it's going crazy out here. So that money is going to stimulate the economy and – it's going to go directly into the people of that city's pockets. So I don't think that it's a fair criticism to be mad at WWE in New Jersey over this. I think it looks weird optics, optic wise, because it's a wrestling show. Cause we wouldn't get mad if the Super Bowl was going to New Jersey and they was using these funds. We wouldn't get mad if it was all-star weekend or the Olympics. We're only looking at it crazy because it's pro wrestling and pro wrestling is kind of frowned upon by people in our society that aren't in it to the outsiders looking in it just sounds crazy wrestling the same show that Vince McMahon is like in court for like that's what we're bringing in with pandemic relief funds but we got to understand wrestling is at the like it's hot it's, it's the hottest it's ever been it's gonna I think stimulate it, the economy so we can't be mad at it and and I think if if the people are mad they probably don't understand you know the value of WWE and what they bring in until they actually read about it because, you know, of course, if you hear something like the Super Bowl, oh, yeah, let's go. But then you hear wrestling. It's like, how much money do they make? <laughs> and, and and at the end of the day, is it really the people of New Jersey or is it just people on X? See, now that's Instagram? what I want to know. How do the people in New Jersey feel? Because I ain't heard a word from anybody from New Jersey. I see a lot of wrestling fans with, you know, Kenny Omega profiles saying that WWE is evil for stealing pandemic funds. But I don't really hear from people in New Jersey. How do the people in New Jersey feel about pro wrestling coming to town in 2025 and taking pandemic funds? Are y'all, are y'all cool with that? <laughs> if anybody is listening to this pod, man, from New Jersey, please let us know something. Like, we need your, you know, your input on this all because at the end of the day, we just listen to AEW bots or <laughs> people who just don't like WWE. And also, why are you still in New Jersey? Get out. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. No, New said, Jersey like, is a weird state. Just to be clear, like, is it? Yeah, you, I've never been. I've still, never been. They still have you can't pump your own gas there huh? because that's a job. Yeah, in New Jersey, you can't pump your own gas. They have they still have gas attendants because that's a job. And if that you do it, like you're taking thing. their job. No, I know, but it's weird. And then you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that don't sound like the worst no, thing in the world. I'm not actually. saying it's not cool. I'm just saying. No other state is doing that. So when you pull up, if you've never been there, it's kind of it can get aggressive because the person walked up on my car and I was like, hey, man, what's up? You know, what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> but uh, oh, OK, right. The city I was in, I think they don't. If I'm wrong, kill me in the comments. But this is what I was told. They don't. You can't buy pants on Sunday or something weird like that. Like that's still on the books. It's a very Wait. interesting state. 
I'll, 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 give, I'll, I'll do some fact checking. Whoa. But the thing I wanted to say is they spent the seven million to try to make 80. So you can't be mad at that. Like, regardless of where it came from, if you're spending to make 80, seven to make 80, anybody would take that deal. Yeah. It just it sounds bad because of where the money is coming from, but we gotta we gotta ignore those words. If if this money wasn't going to WWE to bring in that two night SummerSlam, we wouldn't know where this money was going anyway. Let's be honest. It would be great if we were building libraries in poor neighborhoods or you know, building basketball courts for recreational sports for the youth or any of that. That would be great. That would be beautiful. That would be lovely. We all know that wasn't gonna happen. If they didn't use this money to bring in WWE, we were never going to know what they used this money for. We got too much information on our hands. That's really the problem. We know too much, and we want to always have an opinion on everything. Sidebar. New Jersey weird laws. No self-service gas. No vanity plates. No car sales on Sunday. No swearing in Raritan. I don't even know what that means. No selling handcuffs to minors. It is illegal to slurp soup. It is illegal <laughs> for men to knit while fishing. And it is yeah. illegal to frown at a police officer. I'm just saying, man, New Jersey has some things. Yeah. It, hey, yo, they got some Chick-fil-A rules. This is crazy. <laughs> Wait, what the hell is a Chick-fil-A rule? <laughs> well, you know, Chick-fil-A is closed on Sundays. Closed on Sunday? Okay. I was like, where are you going? Where that? I'm like, do Chick-fil-A got rules I don't know about? Are, can you not bite the sandwich from the bottom? Or like, what's going on? That's crazy. We need to check in on the rappers that's from Jersey, man. Button and all these other. That's crazy. <laughs> right. But wow. I think we, we know too much as wrestling fans because realistically, we don't need to know how much money WWE is getting to host these shows in New Jersey. All we need to know is that they there. <laughs> Come. Yeah, I mean, because as Show a fan, up. you know, as a fan, the kind of fan I am, I don't care what you're doing with your money. I care about giving, I care about you giving me the best product. I need, right. you know, the in-ring, I need the storylines. That's what I care about. At but also, day, also, you didn't really know, though, because you weren't, you weren't in it, in it, like me at all, and Sylvan work. Cause I've been, I've been, I hate to admit this, but I've been in the dirt sheets since I was like thirteen. Oh, so, we, yo, when when people were wa- like when my peers were watching wrestling on just like a surface level, I watch what's on TV and then I move on. I knew who guys like Dave Meltzer were for years because I <laughs> I was tapped in with like Raja.com and WrestleVotes and all those websites who put out rumors and spoilers and Dave Meltzer notes. So I've been in it. I've known I've had an abundance of information on wrestling and the behind the scene workings on it for a long time. You didn't really get into that life until like recently. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, so I got to blame you and Sylvan. You know what I'm saying? Because I never was in, even with movies, bro. I never wanted to look at behind the scenes. Just give me just give me my product. Once I found out they were in a pool when they filmed Titanic, I was like, bro, are you serious? <laughs> you thought they were in the ocean? <laughs> Yeah, I was young, you know. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I do get dis- I do get disappointed when certain things in movies I think is like a real life set, and then I see behind the scenes and I realize it's just green screen and a bunch of little digital enhance like CGI and stuff. Yeah, because I just saw a clip from a uh, Endgame, Avengers Endgame, where they're giving you additional dialogue between Peter Parker and Iron Man, and I realize Peter Parker's whole suit is CGI. Like the entire oh, really? suit, the Spider Man, the Spider Man suit is CGI. It wasn't even a real suit that he was wearing in the movie. So, Things like that disappoint Spider-Man me. So I feel you. How I did you swear. think it was appearing on him? Like it was. I just don't a- know, bro. <laughs> I thought he was. I y'all thought he was most putting the most live in. Y'all believe in make believe. Good for you all, bro. I thought- Good for- y'all go to Disneyland every year, don't you? Nah, just- y'all be- nah. y'all love make believe. <laughs> it's just certain things because like. So Guardians of the Galaxy, I appreciate uh, – what's my man? Taika Waititi, is that his name? I appreciate him because he does a lot of set pieces. It's kind of like the old Star Wars movies. He does a lot of set pieces. So everything you see in that surrounding area, the buildings and all that, that's actually things that they built. Mm, yeah. And, when, and when, it, when it is that, it feels more authentic. But then when it's just green screen and people talking – you can feel the difference. You can feel the difference. And there are certain things about Avengers Endgame that I didn't know was CGI until I saw that behind the scenes and I realized, hey, all the settings, the background, the buildings, the fires, 
it was not there. It was yeah, because Toby was wearing the real the real suit, but you know, I guess they shifted over. You know, as times changed and right, he out here with <laughs> with nothing on. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's just the advancement of film. Like we can't get mad at it. This is just the way the world is going. You know, what else we can't get mad at? What? WWE, because they didn't know about these funds, man. At the end of the day, WWE did not know about these funds. They just here to make a... Nah, you know, they know about it. They just didn't demand it. Like it they didn't dem- Bro, they did not run into the government offices with a gun and threaten to pull out unless they get... Like, no, that's not how it happened. And that's how the people are painting it. But it's like, no, they, WWE is just doing their job. They're putting on the best show possible. If a city wants to come to them and pay them money to have a show there... Okay. So I have a quote from the article. So I'm going to read that people can understand, you know, what's really going on. So it says, that money can be used to respond to the negative economic impacts of the public health emergency by providing aid to impacted industries such as tourism, travel, and house fatality. Why are we complaining? That literally is the exact definition of what's happening. Do you know how much... I might go to New Jersey to watch this show. <laughs> you think I want to go to New Jersey? Who's from New Jersey? Joe Budden? You think I want to go to where Joe Budden is from? And Sue Surf? <laughs> is Sue Surf from Jersey? <laughs> Sue Surf is definitely from Jersey. Yeah, he's from Jersey. You think I want to go there? But I might fly in because I want to see SummerSlam, the first two-night sure. SummerSlam. Do you know how much money I'm going to spend when I'm in New Jersey? I got to get a hotel. I got an Uber around the city. Of course, I'm going to eat. I'm not going to just bring Lunchables and, and snack. I got to go eat. I got to go to the malls and buy clothes and shop since I'm in a new city. Come on, man. That, that's, mo- that's money that's going directly back to the people of New Jersey. So here's a question. Does having this information help or hurt fandom? Yeah, So and that's what I, that's what I wanted to get into when I asked Cooley about um, – how he feels now that he's in it because he wasn't always in it like me and Sylvan were, but now he's in it. Do you see the the sport of pro wrestling any different now than you did before you were tapped um, into the dirt sheets? I will say, I mean, I do because I understand that at the end of the day, everything is a business and our feelings don't really matter at the end of the day. We just here mm. to get, to be entertained. Um, I like it without the dirt sheets. I don't really want to know what's going on behind the scenes. I just care about my product and, you know, what I like to see and what I like to be entertained by. I don't care about how much money you're spending, the the, the background of it. I don't care about none of it. So I'm the kayfabe guy. But why not? Today. But why not? Because when it comes to, like, other sports, when it comes to, like, basketball, football, you pay attention to the contracts and everything because you want to know how much money is left for the Lakers to go get this guy or that guy. You need to know the cap room, the cap space. You want to know about the transactions and player movement around the league. So how come when it comes to pro wrestling, all of a sudden you just want to shut your ears to that and only watch the show? No, because even with the sports, I, it, like the trades are cool, but at the end of the day, I can see that these guys are just worried about the bag and they're not in, the, in it for so, the love of the game anymore. And I don't really – I don't have nothing to do with me, so I don't care. And that's why – I follow certain players. I don't really get into the genie buses of it all. I don't care <laughs> of about it all. all, bro. Yeah, man. So you don't. So you don't care about like the, for instance, when Woj is putting out tweets saying like, "Hey, the Minnesota Timberwolves and the New York <laughs> Knicks might be in discussions for a trade involving Carl Anthony Towns." You don't pay attention to none of that. I- I, I see on. it. I'm like, oh, okay. You just, you just, you just watch when the trade happens. You don't watch Yeah, that. I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, when we see the trades in real life on X, granted, it's like, oh, my God, this is dope. But, like, how they, how much they getting, it's like, okay, I don't really care, bro. Let's so pay Cooley, the women Cooley first. Not, Cooley not really about that life thing. He just want to watch everything through an ignorant childhood eyes and not know what's going on besides the show on the TV. <laughs> I don't care how much Steph Curry is getting for putting a ball in the hoop. But that's important information. If you were Why? if you a Warriors fan, so if I'm a Laker fan and Jared Vanderbilt is getting a nine million dollar a year extension, that's important information to know because there's a cap space in the NBA. And if the Lakers are giving Jared Vanderbilt nine million, then that means that's nine million off the books. That means that that's nine million dollars that we can't spend elsewhere. So that type of information is important to me. I don't just show up to the game and watch what's happening on the court. I need to know the backgrounds of these things. I need to know if Jenny Buss is spending her money irresponsibly. Like, I'm yeah, sorry, but, but that's but, the type but, of fan I am. 
And that's why you be mad the whole season because you know. <laughs> Like you're not wrong. You, you know Vanderbilt's getting nine million, meaning nothing's gonna change this whole right. season. So now you're gonna be upset the whole season. <laughs> I'm cool, man. Look, I'm just living life. I got my popcorn, my slushy. I'm I'm and chilling, like, bro. And I that's and that's true because I was very upset when I find out things like, oh, the Lakers let Alex Caruso walk because they didn't want to match the the small contract that Chicago was offering him. And the only reason they didn't want to match that small con- contract. It's because they were in a luxury tax, and Jeannie Buss did, didn't want to pay the additional luxury taxes. Stuff like that, heartbreaking. It makes my blood boil, but I also want to know it. I want to know if the thing that I love is being ran and ne- I, I, I hate trying to say this word negligently. I need to know that. I'm sorry, but I do. That's just the type of fan I am, and it's no I different mean, when it comes to pro wrestling. Like I, I, I like to know what's going on. If WWE is the most lucrative it's ever been, if wrestling is the the hottest it's ever been. And the money is showing that. I want to know that. I'm sorry, but I do. Mm, I mean, I tried. I tried with the Cowboys, and me and Jerry, we just don't click. Like mm. I was over it once he let Jerry, Derek Henry walk because he didn't want to. Like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I, I can't know these type of things, man. Let me just stick to my kayfabe and pretend like Triple H did not cut his hair ball. You know, I'm cool. <laughs> I'm Wait, cool. was Derek Henry a cowboy? Why don't I remember this? No, I'm saying Derek Henry was he he wanted to go to Dallas. Oh yeah, yeah. And he was like, oh yeah, you're in Baltimore, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. And now he's killing in Baltimore. Let's don't get me started about the Cowboys, man. I we got smacked. Oh, I ain't got no problem, so I'm cool. <sighs> I can't believe Cooley is sitting here. Cooley's such a, a surface level. He want Cooley wanna be a kid. Cooley just wanna not know about anything going on. He just wants to see what's on the TV. And I respect hey, that, but that's crazy to me. Nah, man. I just I'm I'm just here to, to be entertained, man. I don't that's care cra- about the but money of it all. I, Every, that's that stuff plays a part into the entertainment of it, because to me, WWE and we're about to get out of this topic. Let me just get this in. WWE getting seven million dollars from the government to have a two night show in New Jersey. To me, that's just a testament to how hot pro wrestling is right now. And as a fan, that makes me very happy, bro. Because this wasn't always the case. I, when when Tony Khan is pulling up on these cities, he's renting out the marinas. <laughs> <laughs> the government not yeah. giving Tony Khan money to run shows. <laughs> so seeing something like this, it's a dope thing. It's, it's dope to me that pro wrestling is on the same level as a Super Bowl or All-Star Weekend or the Olympics. That's super ill to me. And Cooley is basically saying, I don't care about none of that. I just want the show to be good on TV. You you sound crazy. I'm going to let you know. Hey, I love Roman, you know, coming back, getting his bloodline back together. It's a beautiful thing. And I do love being in these cities when when, when, we're, when we're holding WrestleManias and we see the cities getting taken over by wrestling fans. I've seen it in Dallas. I've seen it in Vegas when we was in SummerSlam. It's a beautiful thing, man. So we, we it know is. it's booming right now. And, you know, I love it. But at the end of the day, get them dirt sheets out of here, man. <laughs> Get them dirt sheets out of here, man. <laughs> Shout out to the dirt sheets. Dave Meltzer, Brian Navarez, Sean Rossap, uh, <laughs> Raj Geary. <laughs> I'm just going to name all this dirt, the dirt sheet writers. Oh, <laughs> the dirt sheet writers that got the rock wrong that say they wasn't coming to WrestleMania, right? Can we get into that? <laughs> <laughs> Dave yeah. Meltzer apparently got all that wrong. So Dave, if, if you weren't paying attention, Dave Meltzer was saying that the Rock's schedule is busy. The Rock is going to be filming a movie next year, which means he's not going to be able to get into ring shape, which means he's not going to wrestle at WrestleMania. Let me look at the Rock. And then The Rock went on Instagram and said, that's cap. <laughs> he said, don't believe that BS. <laughs> What's going on with Dave Meltzer? Is WWE feeding him bad information at this point? Or is he just going on his podcast and guessing? What's going on with Meltzer? Because this would no be like that. the equivalent of Woj. <laughs> Saying that the Lakers are in talks to acquire Kevin Durant, and then the spokesperson for the Lakers being like, "Actually, we have never talked to Phoenix in our lives." <laughs> it's pretty embarrassing, Quan. You might be, you might be onto something, man. Maybe they are feeding this guy a wrong four one one because it's like every time you just start to look a little dumb, bro. Like every it's crazy time. every time. And, and I'm looking crazy. at his schedule and nothing. I don't. Know, he's not <laughs> filming nothing. It's just. I see Fast X Part 2 pre-production. Yeah. So where did he get this from? I, I I honestly think WWE is giving Dave Meltzer bad, bad, bad news. And you know what? It wouldn't surprise me if WWE is giving certain talent 
misinformation and seeing if that misinformation leaks. Because then if I if 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 I'm in creative, right? And I tell someone like Tama Tonga what the plans are for Mania and what The Rock is going to be doing and everything, since he's directly involved in that. And then all of a sudden, Dave Meltzer is reporting that The Rock ain't going to be at Mania. That lets me know as head of creative that Tama Tonga has probably got some loose lips. He probably the yeah. one that's giving out the information. So I feel like mm-hmm. WWE is probably purposely leaking information to certain talent and seeing if that information gets out there. And when it does, that's how we weed out the people who can be trusted from the people who got the loose lips. So they running like the mafia? Like what? They running like <laughs> what? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Like what are we doing? Definitely the mafia. <laughs> hey, Eric Bischoff is on record saying that at some point when uh, WCW was around, he used to purposely give Dave Meltzer bad information just so they can laugh when he reports it. Like him, Kevin Nash, and everyone would be backstage laughing at the report because they gave that information directly to Dave Meltzer just to see if he was going to fact check it or if he was going to report it. And Dave Meltzer would run to his newsletter and report it. So he's been following for the bait for, the bait for 30 years? That's been crazy. Been following for the okie doke for a long time. Long, and I respect Dave Meltzer because he gets a lot right. He knows more about wrestling than I will probably ever know. For sure. But this year, he's been embarrassing himself, man. <laughs> it's been bad. Yeah, man. Ah. It's been bad, it's man. It's a new age. It's a new age. Right. Hey, Woj had to get out. Woj yeah. had to get out of there. Maybe it's time for Sean Ross Sapp to take over and... <laughs> Because Sean Rossap don't miss. <laughs> Outside of the CM Punk story, miss. <laughs> Sean, yeah, Sean Rossap don't miss. Maybe it's time to, you know, Dave Meltzer to get out and be replaced by Sean Rossap a fight for. I don't know. Yeah, he be knowing his stuff, man. Facts. I love Sean Rossap. I want to get on his show one day just so I can talk to him. Cause he a cool. Guy. Hey, man, you will, man. You know, in due we'll time, in due time. We'll let's, see. let's see. Send him a DM, man. <laughs> I'm definitely not sending Sean Ross after D. I'm about to see him and them like, hey, my boy Quan from our pod, he trying to get on. Uh, I'm trying to get on any, Fightful. I, I want to be on Grap City or something. Like, holla at me. <laughs> but I want to hear from the people at home. How do y'all feel about WWE making up with this pandemic relief money from the state of New Jersey? Is it fair? Is it foul? Do you even care? Are you like Cooley? Do you not care about anything but what's on your TV? Are you a surface level fan? A casual? No, I'm just playing. Bro, you going crazy, man. I just like what wrestling. Are you back? <laughs> I hate when I say that. <laughs> I just like wrestling. Like, oh, beat me up when the cameras is off. <laughs> Whoa. But no, let me know how y'all feel about that in the comments, man. And also, let me know how you feel about Dave Meltzer getting all these goddamn stories wrong. <sighs> Come on, he, Dave. He, he out here, it's, it's a Shaq free throw percentage, man. He like 60% right now this year. So every every time he missing, we got we to gotta say, damn it, Dave. You know? <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna start. We need to get a uh, Dave Meltzer counter on this show. That's what we need. <laughs> we gonna count everything he gets wrong during the year, and then at, at the end of the year, we just tally it up. How many stories did Dave Meltzer get wrong? Damn, Daniel. That would be damn, fun. Damn, that would damn. be fun. Cooley, did you watch Wrestle Dream? You know I did. <laughs> you know it was I very did. long. It was very long, but you know I had to tap in, and yeah, it seemed like I you enjoyed it. it. You was on our Twitter going crazy. Yeah, I, I, I kept getting it, notifications. I'm like, what's going on? Oh, my bad. I didn't... <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. Yeah. I love it. We, we need it. We we supposed to be on Twitter. We just doing our yeah, job man. at this point. I, I was into it. I was into it. It, it was dope, man. Look, so, so the show was dope. For me, the, the best match was the, the triple threat. It was, it was a lot of flips. But, you know, at this point, if you get mad at Ricochet and Osprey for doing flips, then you just got to slap yourself because you know what's going to happen when they get in the ring. It's, it, it's, fine. It's, it's fine to have a variety in wrestling. Some wrestling going to be slow. Some wrestling is going to be fast, and some of it is going to be a lot of flips. Just accept that and move on. I'm tired of people getting mad and seeing the same discourse over these flips. It's, some, it's fine. Who cares? Spider-Man. <laughs> but the thing that I wanted to talk about from Wrestle Dream is our boy. Lighters <laughs> up. It is over. The greatest of all time, possibly, Brian Danielson. His career has come to an end in controversial fashion. Man. Or fashion. I don't know why I said fashion. So first, I just want to talk about the real life of it all. Love Brian Danielson. Definitely one of the greatest ever. I'm glad that he got to go out on his own terms because this is a guy who had to retire at one point because he had concussion problems. So the fact that he finally had to, he got to come back, got to leave on his own terms and do what he wanted to do, super dope. Super dope. So hats off to him for an incredible career. You are one of my favorites of all time. But... And kayfabe, the kayfabe of it all, I don't like the way he went out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I don't. 
they damn near killed that man in the middle of the ring, sent the crowd home sad. They put a plastic bag over his head and tried to suffocate him. Nobody was coming out to help him. I'm like, damn, do he got friends? And then that was it. The match itself kind of sucked. I'm not going to hold you. This was not the way I wanted to see Brian Danielson go out. The best way to go out was that incredible match he had with Swerve at All In. It was probably arguably the best match of Brian Danielson's career. In AEW? Wobbler. I mean, in AEW, yeah, granted. <laughs> but it was a five-star wobbler. Dave Meltzer gave it that. That was the perfect time to say goodbye. Just bow out and go out on top. We got to see him have a not so great world title run and then drop it in a terrible match against John Moxley. Nah, I wasn't digging that. I wasn't digging that. I wanted to see him go out like Kobe dropping 60. I didn't want to see him hobble out the sport and never to be seen again. Like, nah, nah. Bro, without on a stretcher. I mean, the kayfabe of, of it all, clearly he was doing his 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 friend a favor. Um, You know, so? go on. If I'm retiring, man, I'm going to do you a favor, man. I'm going to pass the torch <laughs> to you, and I'm, you know, I'm out, man. I'm not going to pass it to somebody like, you know, a random. But, but the match but, was bad. Yeah, the, is that, the match is, is was that the, not. Is that the last thing in, in – is that the lasting image you want to see of Brian Danielson, bro? Him having a, a three star <laughs> match with John Moxley and then suffocating from a bag and getting stretched out the arena? Is that yeah, really what you wanted you, to bro. see? I'm not gonna hold you. The match was not good. Um, it was very. I feel like it was just it was being stretched out. John really didn't know what he wanted to do. You know, he was just running around like he was Pac. Um, John is not a good wrestler. We just got to admit it at yeah. this point. John Moxley is not a, a good wrestler. He's an entertaining wrestler on the mic. Great. He's interesting. I love the new look with the shaved head and the whole faction. But when that bell rings, he kind of got the Jay Uso. It don't be pretty. Unless he's bleeding, unless it's like a hardcore match, it's not going to be good. At least not in 2024. So I don't, I would have had rather saw Brian Danielson wrestle Claudio Castagnoli at this point or Pac. Even Willer got damn Yuta. We all knew Willer Yuta was going to turn, by the way. That was so predictable. I hated everything about this. I'm not going to lie. So I had a different ending. You know, I, you remember what I said on the. Uh, you thought Shane McMahon was going to pop up because you watch your goddamn mind. I mean, he's going <laughs> to pop up eventually. I still think that. But I thought, I knew John Moxley was going to win, but I didn't know the outcome was going to be like that. I thought yeah. Christian Cage was going to come out. Then Darby was going to come out and interfere. Granted, Darby still came out, but he was trying to help. So it kind of took me by surprise. So I was quiet as everybody else was. I was like, bro, this is nuts. What is going on, bro? The yeah, broadcast just done. cut off. Escabler, what's his name? Um, Excalibur. He Jim was Ross. crying. I was like, bro, what is going on? <laughs> Nigel McGinnis was loving it, though. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was like, unsettling, bro. I was like, this, yeah, is, it was- this is weird, bro. But, I mean... I realize this is so weird. I realized that Brian Danielson's last match on Raw was against Seth Rollins. Mm-hmm. And his last and his match on SmackDown WWE was against Roman Reigns. Against Roman Reigns. And and the last like, match at the AEW. What in the shit, <laughs> what, in the hey. shit what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure what all of that is purely coincidental. On? That's the funny part. He wrestled all three members of the Shield for his final nights everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure it's coincidental, but that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is crazy. But um, I agree with you. The match wasn't good, but I feel like if he was to without fighting Swerve, what would have been the outcome for him? Because I feel like he would have still tried to come back out of retirement. He won, if he won the championship, top. and then the next night on Dynamite, he would have came out, relinquished the title. Thank the fans for an incredible, beautiful career, and then bow it out. Go take care of Birdie and be with Brie Bella while Swerve still rides this title win out until Wrestle Dream, where maybe he loses to Hangman or something. I don't know. So Brian don't care about his fans? <laughs> Brian just wants to please – I mean, I, John Moxley is his friend, so, you know, he – like you say, he was probably doing his friend a favor. I get it. I get it. It's just not what I wanted to see at all. But – We've come to the end of the road, man. Light us up for Brian Danielson. This is it. This is but it. I will Ready? say this he set up a future, like a lot of feuds for, you know, um John Moxley and them and the baby faces on AEW. It's gonna be a lot coming, you know, coming mm-hmm. up in the future within next yeah. year. Yeah, so we're gonna maybe now. Yeah, we'll there's gonna be a lot of stuff going on. We'll see. 
I'm ready to call it though. I'm ready to call it. Brian Danielson is the greatest in ring performer of all time. I said you're it. smoking rocks. <laughs> I said it. Who's better? Brian AJ Styles. HBK? AJ Styles better than Brian Danielson? Ain't no way. Yep. Ain't no way. Yeah. Either. Ain't no way. And HBK. Either. And HBK. Let's talk about HBK it. HBK is a more entertaining character for sure. He ain't touching Brian Danielson. You crazy, he ain't bro. Touching him. That's because Brian- you want Spider Man, bro. <laughs> Spider Man. Brian Danielson is or, or HBK is more of a Spider Man than Brian. Brian was both Spider Man, bro. Nah, hell nah. Brian Danielson ain't never been a high flyer. His only <laughs> high flying moves was the diving headbutt, bro. That man was a technician, the greatest oh, yes. technician. Ah. Nobody's touching him. Not Kurt Angle. Not the Dynamite Kid. Not bro. HBK. Nobody. You lucky, Brian Danielson you lucky, is the greatest in ring performer you of all You lucky time. Kurt Anger was only in WWE for six years, and his prime was in TNA. It TNA. Was, oh, you are really so was. lucky, it bro. Because really if, if it wasn't, come on. Kurt Anger was definitely touching Brian hey, Danielson. Look, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments and put who the actual greatest in ring performer is. But until I see a compelling argument, I'm going with Brian Danielson. You're going with 5'8 Brian it's Danielson. Time. It's time. That's fine. He can be 5'8". You don't got to be tall to be a great in-ring performer. <laughs> You're right, because Earl Boykins is one of the greatest point guards of all time. No, he's not. <laughs> he's not even top 100. What is going God. On? Bro, he can dunk. He's 5'6". Yeah, six that's he crazy. He was 5'6". <laughs> hey, Nate Robinson. Oh, yeah, I forgot about well, him. Well, Nate, Nate was doing between the leg dunks, and he was 5'5". Like, five, five. <laughs> Damn, I forgot about Nate Robinson. In uh, mm-hmm. support of Quan's argument, Bret Hart went on record in 2022 saying that Daniel Bryan Sin. I always get his name wrong. What, what is <laughs> Brian Danielson. Brian Danielson is the greatest. There we go. I that's don't care Hart. what Bret Hart talking about. Oh, no, come I'm on. I'm kidding. Come I'm kidding. On. <laughs> Bret Hart won the, he won the ones. But if that, Brett, that, yeah. If Bret's saying that, if Bret's saying it, then it means something. Cause, yeah. Yeah, that Brett would be like Michael ones. Jordan calling someone the greatest ever. If Michael Jordan said it, then all right, I got to take yeah. the word for it. You know. Ooh, man. You know. Well, hell of a career. 2005 to 2024. That's a very long time. I was a <laughs> sophomore when he started, bro. I'm in my right. 30s now. That's crazy. That's crazy. Right. And, and the dope thing about Brian Danielson is that he was never supposed to make it this far. When he got to WWE, you just he 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 was the anti WWE. He represented everything that WWE was not. He wasn't big. He was kind of small. He didn't have a marketable look. He looked like a, a, a Starbucks barista, but he could wrestle. And that wrestling got him so far, man. He became world champion in WWE because of that wrestling. Yeah, greatest in ring performer of all time. I said it. I said it. One of the greatest movements, too. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Dang, it's really well, over. Ice Cube. Yes. Yes. It's really, it's really over. over, bro. That's insane. Anyway, what kind of game we got today, man? Where my music at? Uh, I don't have a game actually. I got caught Damn. up. I'm not gonna lie to you. Damn, <laughs> no games today. <laughs> and on that note, hey, we already at the 38 minute mark anyway. <laughs> we got some fan uh, comments. Yeah, that's I do. Me. I, don't I have do. A game today. Hey, I got a game. It's called Who's the Greatest of All Time, and the answer is Ding Ding Ding, Brian Danielson, Kane. <laughs> it's gotta be Kane. It's gotta be get. It's got to be Kane. <laughs> Yo, I just saw Kane and Blue Kane are wrestling the match. So they weren't the same person. Oh. Yeah. They're wrestling against each other. Gay Kane and Blue Kane. They're going to have a this match. This should be interesting. <laughs> They're going to get hit with the biggest cease and desist. They're playing with fire right now, dog. Yeah, man. Do y'all know Kane is a Republican? He's going to find something. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Kane is the most conservative man ever. You know he's not going to like this. But Yikes. that's kind of what makes me love it even more because I know Kane is fuming when he sees it. Anyway, I do got a fan comment, and this is from our boy Obi Wan is cool, and he called me out. Our boy Eric called me out. So our last episode, I went on record saying that I don't like Soul Ruka's Soul Snatcher. I don't like it. It's too fancy. It's too acrobatic, and it's the RKO. And I feel like the RKO is one of those moves that needs to be protected. I said that. I said that on his podcast. And our boy Obi-Wan is cool said, damn, Quan, where's this energy with Zachary Wentz UFO cutter or Javon Ooh. Evans springboard cutter or the Cody cutter? Ooh. Yo, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, boy. Zachary Wentz. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't, I didn't even realize that. You Dang, got me. Crazy. I have contradicted myself because I never said a peep. 
when Cody hit that Cody cutter. I never said a word when Javon Evans hit that springboard cutter, but I had smoke for Soul Ruka when she hit her Soul Snatcher. And I'm going to be I honest with Ruka, you. Man. The reason I had smoke for Soul Ruka, it's not the obvious. It's not because she's a woman. Yeah, so don't, don't, don't put your mind there. The reason I had a problem with Soul Ruka's version of it it's because she does a front flip. We don't need a front flip uh, for the RKO. Man. So you don't, you don't like putting a little twist on your stuff? Like, come on, man. What are we talking about? Nah, <laughs> man. I, I, I'm cool with a springboard diamond cutter. I'm cool with a diving cutter. I'm cool with a, a diamond cutter from the top rope. But once you start front flipping and do it, it's like, all right, we doing a lot. We doing Quan was the it's kid like, that only like vanilla vanilla ice cream with with syrup. He didn't want the sprinkles. He didn't want the almonds. Like, what are we talking about, man? All right, Come so on, man. your favorite move of all time is the Stone Cold Stunner. You have no, it's not. set oh well, one of them. You said it was one of the greatest <laughs> finishers of all time. He's gonna say no, it's not. He's just gonna cut my point off. The point is, you love the Stone Cold Stunner, right? Because Stone Cold is your favorite. The Whiplash. Okay, so imagine imagine this. Imagine there's a new wrestler, right? And their finisher is a backflip Stone Cold Stunner. They stand in front of their opponent, and they just backflip off vert and then catch him, and boom, Stone Cold Stunner. Hmm. Would you be a fan of that, or would you be like, all right, we're doing a lot? Be I honest, think be, I think I'd probably be a fan of it, man. <laughs> I don't know. A backflip Stunner. Okay. Somebody should try okay. that. Juan, okay. you might be cooking. <laughs> Actually, no. It, 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 it looks stupid when you really think about it, because you, you're going to do a backflip, and then you but have to kick and stunner. You know who could do it, though? If somebody could do it. Scripps will be the one. <laughs> Reggie. One thousand percent. Our boy Reggie would be the one that could do it. <laughs> so Reggie, if you're listening and you steal this, we you know, we're gonna have to come for you. But nah, man, I don't like the I don't like all the variations on these moves. Like uh my boy Orange Cassidy does a version of the stunner and it's called the Stun Dog Millionaire. And it's cool. Like I like the way it looks, but nah man, that's the Stone Cold Stunner. Leave that alone. Even though Stone Cold kind of took that took from that. my boy <laughs> Mike Mikey. Yep. The whippersnapper, but, you know, it's all good. But that's the stunner at this point. So protect that. Protect that. But shout out to you, Obi-Wan is cool, for calling me out for contradicting myself because I definitely did. <laughs> he said, where's that energy with Javon Evans? You only got the smoke for the women? Damn. 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 For the women. You, you got me. You caught me red-handed. Like Queen Slip always saying, you got him. We got him. We got him. <laughs> Queen Slip is hilarious, man. That's all I got for fan comments, though, man. That's all I, I found got. The game. That's all I got. I found oh, the oh, game. Oh, we back got one? Game. We back. We back. All right. Let's get it. Hold on. Let's get through. There we go. <laughs> all right. Sorry about the delay. Hey, so, all good. today, we are going to play Finisher Switcheroo. So, taking your favorite finishers, the Stunner, the Rock Bottom, Sweet Chin Music, the Tombstone Power Driver and the RKO. But who actually would be better, or who could you see actually using this move? And you could feel it, right? So, for instance, could RK, could Randy Orton pull off the stunner? And you really believe? It? Yeah, I think so. I honestly think so. I, I mean, the RKO was damn near a variation of a stunner anyway. So all he would have to do is just land on his butt instead of his back. I'm I'm down with that. I don't know about Stone Cold with the RKO though. That would look a little weird. <laughs> yeah, that's that's too much on his neck, and you know I don't think he would even look right doing that at all. He's so right. emotional. But, I don't care know. about his neck. <laughs> I'm asking you, can it? Could, all things possible, could, could no. the move be dope? <laughs> he no. About his neck. No. Not my Stone Cold. <laughs> right. <laughs> What else did we have? The, the sweet chin music? People. Well, here's my here's the next one. The people's elbow. Does that work without the rock? Who could pull off the people's elbow? Oh, absolutely. Montez Ford can pull off the people's I elbow knew because you. he's done it. <laughs> <gonna say that>. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Starks can pull off the people's elbow because he's basically the rock's clone. LA Knight damn near do the people's elbow. <laughs> the Usos can pull off the people's elbow. The, the, yeah. Trick Williams. Yeah, the people's elbow. As long as you it's, got the swag, you can do it. Yeah, because it's not really a electrifying move, as they call it. It's just you right. Know. It's just a, it's a, a leg or an elbow drop with some dancing. And you just run. Our the ropes. could probably do it. And it'll look good. Ron Breaker probably can do it, bro. <laughs> I can do the people's elbow. Matter of fact, I don't. I feel like I feel like you have to be tall. I don't like if short people's elbow is kind of yeah. weird to me. 
I think Ray Mysterio can do one. Yeah, Ray Mysterio <laughs> nah. with a with a people's elbow. It's like really. Is yeah, that, is that a people's weird. elbow or is that the kid's elbow? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, that's weird. That's Number weird. three, sweet chin music. Oh, well, everybody doing it. <laughs> so. Yeah, everybody damn near do it already. But as a yeah. finisher, <laughs> remember remember Stevie Richards? He used, he used to do the Stevie kick as the finisher. <laughs> and that was the sweet chin music. Yeah, man. Uh, Booker T can do the sweet chin music. Um, oh, yeah, because it's like... The Harlem sidekick is damn near, damn near that. Um, Dolph Ziggler, of course. Uh, Edge. I can see Edge doing the sweet chin music. Because he got them long legs. Man, yeah, I'm going to be honest. For me, nobody does the sweet chin music like HBK. I know every, I know everybody does it now. The Usos, all they do is super kicks. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Young Bucks, all they do is super kicks. But nobody does it like Shawn Michaels. So. Yeah, and that was that's what I was going to say. I think... I think a lot of these moves have to do with the charisma of the move. Like, yeah. Booker T, yes, could do sweet chin, but it wouldn't feel the same. Like, he's big. You know, it's like, why are you doing that? You know right. what I mean? As your finisher, right? That's that's what I mean. Like, obviously, anybody who's athletic could do the moves. Right. But who would it fit, right? And, and also, go like, ahead. HBK would go in the corner, and he would tune up the band and, like, yeah. before he does Right, it. it's he a whole thing. He had a thing. whole swag yeah, with Yeah, it. it's a thing. And that's one of the things I hate about today's wrestling. I'm going to be honest that, you know, they didn't protect that move, man. They did not protect that move, and everybody's doing it, and it just lost the sauce of it all. And it's just like, it's annoying yeah. as hell. Yeah. The sharpshooter. You know, we don't see that too much anymore. We don't see the, the submission finishes like we used to. Thank Bro, God. we've seen a sharpshooter <laughs> at Bad Blood. CM Punk was trying to put Drew and in, in front of Goldberg. <laughs> In front of Goldberg and failed. I was like, yeah, we can't do that move. Yeah, and The Rock used to do the sharpshooter as one of his finishers. It was, but it was ugly. Trash. It yeah. was, I, was, I don't want to see it. It was not what's up for him. It was I not, forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. It was yeah. not. And that's Sharpshooter my point. Is a, These moves don't fit everybody. Right. Sharpshooter is definitely something that only Bret Hart should do. Unless it's yeah. Brian Danielson. Because Brian Danielson is the greatest in-ring technician of all time. He can do any move in that ring. And that's what I was going to say. I, that's a real tactician type of move. Like, it has to fit your package. Like, it makes sense based on all the moves you were doing already. And then now I'm going to finish you off because you're you're tired because I put you in all these crazy situations. You know what I mean? Right. At least for me. Look, I'm all playing the game now. All right. <laughs> Let's go. GTS. Go to sleep. Who else could pull that off? The person who originated it. Kenta. <laughs> <laughs> CM Punk stole I GTS. Punk told that, man. GTS, bro. Punk stole the hell out of GTS. Kenta created that move, and I hate that they've never wrestled each other. I want to see Kenta versus CM Punk so bad. But with that said, after CM Punk, I never want to see any other wrestlers doing it. Just leave it at. Uh, actually, somebody Jack Perry. Did it in I'm cool. AEW. I'm cool. I think Jack Perry might have done it. But we, but it we was know somebody why he else did it, though. though. Yeah, but <laughs> we know why Jack Perry. But it looked weird because he's sh like, he's little, mm -hmm. so it didn't look believable to me. It's like I don't know, I can't explain it. But I those are see, the only three I'll allow. I can see Brock Lesnar actually doing it and pulling it off, and it'd be dope. <laughs> Hell no! Just because he's doing the F, the F five, you're throwing bullshit. somebody, and I feel like it's like the same kind of thing. You just with the knee, right? I don't know. You know who? Actually, you know who did a GTS in WWE? Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah, uh, remember when they was like kind of when they was alluding it? Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> ah, I forgot about that. I forgot about Shinsuke that. Shinsuke did it, but yeah, I don't want. I, I don't really want to see a lot of people doing that move. That's that's a move that it's synonymous with CM Punk at this point. Go to sleep. And last but not least, the Tombstone Power Driver. No, are people allowed to that. do that anymore? <laughs> no, it's not in WWE. Yeah, that's yeah, damn. In AEW, they be doing it. I think uh, Ricochet got tombstone through a table. <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing about that for me. Just my childhood again. I look at the, tomb the tombstone strictly for Undertaker because it, it, it it's parallel to his character. He's the dark, evil, dead guy. Tomb'stone. You know. So I just, that's just how I look at it, and I just feel like yeah, yeah it don't hit I the agree. same for me as other people doing the tombstone. I agree with that too. I, I feel the same way. Leave it. Is leave it all leave it with Taker. I had. All right. Pull all right. one out. The last pick. 
There we go. <laughs> look, look, look. We had one more in us. I had one more in me. I got one more in me. If we, yo, Cooley, since we speaking on moves that need to be retired and left where they at, the Swanton Bomb. I'm starting to get tired of seeing everybody doing it. Let Jeff Hardy have that. Yeah, I love man. Kevin Owens. I love the Young Bucks. I love all these guys, but Swanton let Bomb Jeff is Hardy Jeff, have bro. the Swanton, bro. Matter of fact, I think Jacob Fatu did it at one point. Man, like, yeah, let man. Jeff have that, bro. They took that from him. <laughs> it's crazy how as, as we get older, we're starting to see all the moves we grew up on become normal moves. I hate it. I hate it. And I, and I guess it happened to the generation before us because at one point, the DDT was like Jake the Snake's finisher. And now, bro. The Rock EO, was doing it. Yeah, EO Sky doing DDT. Everybody doing DDT now. I'm going to so, be I sick mean, if I see an F5. I ain't going to hold you. <laughs> it's like, coming. That, watch. That I give it a norm. <laughs> 15 years, you're going to see dudes in NXT just doing F5s, and they're going to kick out at two. That's just, that's just where we going, man. <laughs> anyway, are you ready to get into your final thought? Do you have a final thought? Uh, we damn near ain't had no game. Yeah, man. <laughs> I, I got a final thought, and it's, I'm What's gonna end it like thought? I started it, man. You know what I'm saying? As we start off this week, this beautiful week, you know how I'm ended of what I love to say. Quan, you with me? Let's say it. Your world, no, is yours. No, I'm not saying it. Always and forever, man. Yes. Shout out to Nas. Shout out to Nas, Nas for show. Shout out and to Nas, we about man. to go. Rest up with the homies. This is your favorite number one podcast. We do this daily, Monday through Friday. Our favorite wrestler, Brian Danielson's career has come to an end. Brian Danielson, we love you. You are one of the greatest of all time. Lighters up for you. And I'm going to get out of here. Make sure you tune in. Make sure you tap in. Make sure you hit that like button, the subscribe button, all them buttons. Hit yes, the sir. buttons. Here we go.